Umusambi village. So the name says it itself. So Umusambi is the Kinyarwana name of grey crowned cranes, the birds known as the East African cranes. So um, uh, we call this place Umusambi village because of the high concentration of cranes. Let me take you a little bit. So Umusambi village, uh, it's a, when you look at the habitat of Umusambi village, it's a wetland and a grassland. So um, uh, wetlands, we use Umusambi as a big representation. Sometimes we use like one species to represent others. But the way Musambi village is, it's like a nature reserve. This is a wildlife refuge. So it represents all, like, we have like more than 120 species of birds. We have like so many species of amphibians, reptiles. We have some mammals, like small mammals, genets, mongoose. We have like all sorts of creatures, like wetlands, you know, like wetlands, um, like 40% of, 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 of animals or wild animals, they live or breed in wetlands. And this is really an important habitat. And so that's what we want to showcase. Although we call it Musambi village, but it's, a, it's a, like, a, like that representation. Musambi represents the big picture of what can be found here. So we want people who come here to be able to connect, to see those little things, to see like the importance of protecting such habitat. Um, uh, yeah, 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 for pollinators, for butterflies, for, for mammals, for like all of those species that we usually don't get to see. We want people really to see that kind of, uh, to, to, to connect, to be able to see them and care. For the last five years, we've been working with the government to abolish the trade in grey crown cranes. Five years ago, in Rwanda, you could see more cranes in people's gardens than it was in the wild. So with the government, we took initiative, we took actions to stop that. So we've educated people and asked people to give us cranes they had in their gardens. So over the five years, we've been like really putting them under the process of health checks, like quarantine, to make sure we can identify cranes that we can take back to their natural habitat. So we've taken a huge number of cranes back to Akagera National Park. But unfortunately, these cranes, during the time they are captured, or when they are in captivity, people cut feathers to stop them from flying. But because some people don't know how to even do it properly, like uh, if a gardener is in a, in a house, sometimes they end up injuring them. So many cranes have sustained really bad injuries that meant like their wings are broken and sometimes like it's too late uh, we got to know those injuries like uh, too late when they were resolved so these cranes have like uh, they have now permanent disabilities sometimes some of them they have like wings that are droppy some of them they have like um, uh, we had to amputate to take a wing off so we have cranes that we never be able to fly so those cranes we've managed to work with the government to rehabilitate this place and change it into like a sanctuary for those cranes. So this place is like a home for disabled cranes that are not able to be returned back to the wild. We have over 70 cranes like those ones. Uh, actually, uh, this is the good news we want to share. Like since we start this program, like really Rwandans have been so collaborative. They understand and they are so proud of these birds and we understand that we all don't want to lose them. We don't want them to see them disappearing. So everyone really collaborated. And I'm happy to say that we have like removed all the captive cranes that we have identified. So this is a new chapter for cranes in Rwanda. Um, uh, as we work with the communities, as we work with the government for law enforcement, as we work really to secure some breeding site, we are hoping that cranes in Rwanda are going to be on rise not on decline like it was a couple of years ago. So we are still working hard to monitor those ones we have reintroduced back to the wild. We are 
working to, to, to protect cranes at key cranes area in those places where you have marshlands. We are involving communities, we are educating young people to take actions at early age. So we hope like all of those actions that we are really putting in place are going to help us reverse the decline that our population of cranes have sustained in the, couple, in the, in the previous years. And we hope the next few years, the next or the future is really nice, is bright and it's, it's promising for the population of cranes in Rwanda. Our grandkids will be able to see cranes. So um, um, our primary aim definitely is to provide a safe home for wildlife like cranes that are disabled. But our second target is really to create options or nice pathways, ways people can come and walk through. So this is different from like going to, pro let's say a hotel or any other place. We want this place to be really different. We want that people who visit us, who come here, the moment they step in, they feel like they are in a different place. We want like, like, um, um, we, are, we want to be at the heart of conservation. We want to be able to tell stories of the work we do. We want to be able to showcase the work we do. Like we want this one to be like a big, like a picture of the successful, the successful conservation work that is going on in Rwanda. So Musambi village is in Kigali, and we want to be like a, a mirror. Like if people come here and say, wow, I, I really want to see like uh, other parts of the country. This is beautiful. It's small, but it's beautiful. And, and the, the really nice stories, nice things. So I want to see other places. So we want to be like really like uh, at the gate. If someone comes in, say, inside, so we create something that we want to see more of Rwanda. But also, we really want to inspire people. Musambi village is, is designed in a way that we are going to have a lot of educational uh, materials, like panels. We want everyone who comes in to read, to take time to connect. We want to inspire people to see and then care. That's